My dream is to play in the NBA, get my name called, or walk, and walk across that stage. I'll say that dream started at seven, eight, but young age playing at the local rec center, just falling in love with the game, not knowing at that young age, like, I didn't know how good Here's I could Davis be. Davis going all the way, slams it in. Wow. He was destined for greatness. He was a good, excellent basketball player. And he will be if he, you know, continue to go forward with it. Tell him all the time, you know, you're very strong. I know I couldn't be around basketball if that had happened to me. You know, if you're that strong of a person, you can do anything. He's the kind of guy that accepts any kind of challenge that he has and goes after it and endures. He's going to do whatever it takes to win, to win in life. You do the work, that mentality of if this is what you want to do, you got to go 110% in achieving that goal. Growing up here in Columbus, being an African-American, being a minority is just like, oh, he's not going to amount to anything. He's just going to be like the, his brother, his cousin, his uncle, or whatever the case may be. So just growing up and hearing those things kind of gave me that drive, that fight in me to, to prove people wrong. Like I can go to college, I can finish high school, I can do whatever I want. Me and AJ started playing against each other in high school. I keep hearing about this freshman. <laughs> that's supposed to be good. So uh, I think we played at Linden that night and <laughs> it's this skinny, skinny kid with these long tube, white tube socks in his headband. And I'm like, this can't <laughs> be who they're talking about. This playing at a high school level, I didn't know how good I was until I started seeing the results, the, the interviews, the, the scouting reports. Being that it's not a lot of college graduates in our family, you know, so to be able to go off and then send tickets back home for us to come support him, you know, I think that was huge for him. Being at James Madison kind of like shaped me and molded me that, to that player that I knew I could be and just, just being comfortable within myself to bring it out. End of November, early December, we had a stretch of games where we were kind of on the losing streak. It was kind of that, that switch where it's just like, okay, we got to make this push for the tournament. They had us see the bottom of none or like the last team to get in the tournament. We just clicked at the right time after our, our conference banquet. Well, I think we were third or fourth seed going into the tournament. So we won enough games to get us in position where we had a nice slate to run where we can make something happen in that tournament and, and going on to win it and going to the NCAA tournament, having two games in the NCAA tournament. When they made it to the tournament and they won that game, you know, that was a big moment for him. That was a big moment for the city because, you know, him and Devon was both Columbus kids. So for them to be able to come home, win a game at home, that was a big moment. And it, again, it showed a lot of city kids that, you know, you can get on that big stage and you can make it happen. Got a deal in 18 to go play in Iraq. And then stayed in Iraq for, for five months, then came back. Was shocked that he was gonna do that because he still had a lot, of, a lot of basketball ahead of him. Uh, certainly made our team very, very competitive. And I just kept waiting for the call that, hey, hey coach, I'll, I'm, I'm going, I, I've got another opportunity. And certainly would welcome any kind of opportunity he would have had. Tonight, we are learning more about a pedestrian hit by a car. It happened on the ramp from South Hamilton Road onto I-70 West. AJ Davis survived but has very serious injuries. I want to show you some video from Sunday night, and you can see Davis here playing with his team. The Columbus Condors, Davis scored 29 points during this game. Got a call from uh, Brett McKnight at about 645. We were trying to get ready to go to Detroit for the weekend, get the travel plans all together. So I thought, well, he must be calling to, to tell me that. And uh, unfortunately, that's not what he was calling to tell me about. I text him and I said, please tell me that you're okay. And I never got a response. So when I got to the hospital, as soon as I got out the car, I just instantly heard everybody crying and running and I just was lost. The surgeon had called and my cousin had him on speakerphone. The first thing I've ever heard that put me in a spiral was that we had to amputate the left leg. Not knowing at the time that eventually we'll find out it was both. 
was visiting with my daughter the day of May 5th. On the freeway, taking her home to meet her mom. I was exiting the freeway, seen a, a gentleman stand off to the side, asking for assistance and food, clothing, and stuff like that. Lucky I had groceries in my trunk that I could give him. Put the car in park, popped the trunk, walked around to get those things out of him, to, to help him out. And as I'm still digging in the trunk to get him some things out, the car came flying off the exit ramp, pinning me to the back of my car. I crawled from the back of my car to the front seat to make sure my daughter was okay. A gentleman walked up to my car. I didn't know who he was, where he had came from. He was just kind of saying like, I'm here to help you. Let me get you to the hospital. I had my daughter call her mom. And luckily she was right down the street and kind of got there in, in a hurry. As I'm sitting in my front seat and she's calling her mom, just kind of like, saying in my head, please, Lord, don't let me die. Please, Lord, don't let me die. And that kind of gave me that strength and energy to, to hold on until I got transported from my car into the stretcher, into the ambulance, into the hospital, where they could do amputate my legs and, and all of that. First time he called me after it happened, uh, just so upbeat and just next challenge in his life. And uh, I've, I've been amazed. First time I heard my brother's voice, he said, I'm not gonna let this hold me back. This is not gonna be something that defines me. You know, like I'm bigger than this. So I had to take that and be like, okay, if he's strong, I have to be strong. The dude is always happy. <laughs> like, like, it's crazy. He's almost so happy that it makes you uncomfortable. But then again, it shows you like, hey, what do I have to be, you know, sad about or mad about? That right there just gives a lot of people strength because you can go through something so tragic that he went through and to still be able to have a smile on your face, still be able to give positivity to people, you know, because his situation, he was helping someone. And that could leave somebody with a lot of questions and in a dark place and really question life. And he hasn't shown that at all. Upon waking up, it was kind of like, okay, I'm going to heal from this. Let's let's see what the this next step is. So it was kind of that that fighting urge of, to figure out what's going to be next for me. How I'm going to overcome this? I can't dwell on it. Can't get too down on myself and let it drive me into a place where I can't get out of. So it's just being able to stay positive and continue to live on from this situation. This is a ceremonial toss of the tip in order to get Davis into the starting lineup. Again, a great gesture. Sideline Cancer has their own cause, but it's nice that they take the time out to recognize the, the efforts of A.J. Davis. And you think about this, what the story you just told happened two months ago. And it is just remarkable that he has the courage, the energy, the enthusiasm to be here and cheer his team on and actually start the game. Heroic. The moment that I knew he was going to be going to the TGT tournament, I packed his bags up. I was like, you got to go. He's a big reason why that team even got into the TGT. And to see that moment shared on every basketball platform in the country was big. It was definitely shocking and humbling experience. Leading up to the tournament, I didn't know that they were going to do that. We're heading up to the University of Dayton to see the championship game of the TBT basketball tournament um, for a million dollars. Just going here and watching the game, I'll, I'll get that adrenaline rush. I'll get that those flashbacks of playing, that, that urge to play again. So it's definitely that that competitiveness in me, that fire that wants to, wants to get back out there and play. It's definitely a dream that rush watching the game. Brought back those uh, competitive spirits. This was reminiscing, thinking of what if. Um, not really sure what's next, but 
hoping whatever endeavors that I'm embarking and can do, um, I know that I will take it with full head of steam. I do not feel like his basketball dream is over. You know, he has so much knowledge for the game. He's been playing it for so long that he'll find a way to get on the court and play it or be a coach. He went from being the tallest person in the family to the shortest person. To see that and to have the courage he does to get up every day and move forward, I mean, nothing stops him, nothing.